I always say that this show is Little Shop of Horrors set in the world of Mean Girls <laughs> with a dash of the Matrix. The flow of the record doesn't feel like a traditional musical at all. It feels like an album that you can just like put in your car stereo and just crank the volume and have a great time listening to it. It's a look at the teenage experience, but with this science fiction lens and how those two things kind of feed off each other. It's got the be more chill sound. It doesn't sound like anything else in it. The story is not like anything else. I'm a super fan of Joe Iconis. The thing that attracted me to this show in particular was actually initially Joe Iconis. I was so excited to just go in for something that he was attached to. I mean, characters, music, Joe Trace's book, I mean, like everything. It was all just so tight and so fun. So I had heard about Joe Iconis for a really long time and everybody was like, this dude's great. And everyone loves Stephen Brackett as well and Joe Trace, I had heard such great things about. And so I was like, all right, let's, let's try this. Everybody's got a red solo cup, fill it up, fill it up, hear the beer spill on the ground. Everybody's all like, suck, yo man, suck, let's catch up, let's smoke up. Look how many drinks I'm down. Every single song's all like, whoop, they're all whoop, we're like, yo, turn it up. As we stumble to the sound, cause a Halloween party's a nice I really like his music. I like that he's not your typical writer. Joe creates a world for like weirdos and outcasts and troublemakers and like I really feel like that's kind of who I am as a person. So naturally I think I fit well into what he does. Freshman year, I didn't have a girlfriend. It had moments where it rocked, it had moments where it was creepy, it sounded like a horror movie. The way that the music functions in the show, it really feels like it is its own character. It's like the sci-fi, rock, pop, still musical theater genre. It's like the craziest thing. And it's from Japan! It's a gray, a long pill, quantum nanotechnology CP. When I was writing the show, I was really heavily influenced by uh, horror film scores. It's like we're in this like high school pop rock world, and then this whole other style like creeps in. I'm happy that a lot of that crazy science underscoring got put down because it really does set the scene for the sci-fi explosion that this show is. The two Joes who wrote it, their voices were, I, I feel like they became one, and that Joe Trace's spirit is 100% in that entire score as much as Joe Iconis's. Is. I love play rehearsal, cause you are equipped with directions and text. Life is easy in rehearsal, you follow a script so you know what comes next. Joe's Lyrics are, are anything, they, they seem so simple to the ear, but they're really not. There's a lot of thought put into these characters and, and into their songs, and that's my favorite aspect of Joe's writing. He can write a song about a moment that you never thought would ever have a song written about it. Like Michael in the bathroom. He's written a song about a kid in a bathroom at a party who has such social anxiety, doesn't want to go out and talk to people. Michael in the bathroom, of course, is the most amazing song. Or disappear, and nobody'd even notice at all. It's Michael's soliloquy. He's sitting in the bathroom. He's been abandoned by his best friend, and he's kind of having a panic attack. He was offering that moment that we all had at one point in our lives where we just felt so alone and so lost and so ready to just give up and quit. Tears, I'll wait as long as I need till my face is dry, or I'll just blame it on weed or something in my eye. I'm just Michael, who you don't know. Michael flying so low. Michael in the bathroom by himself. To, to get to like stand out there and just scream, like just shout and scream and like go through um, a million different emotions within a five minute piece is like kind of like the artist's dream, you know? It's just such an incredible, beautiful anthem, I feel, for young people who experience moments of loneliness and alienation and frustration with the people that are around you. Everybody knows about these moments, but it's just he is able to articulate them in a way that's just 
which is brilliant. The door, but I can't hear knocking anymore. OMG, Clo, answer me. Whoa, wait until I tell you what I heard. Something that I'm super proud of is this song called The Smartphone Hour. It's like one of the one of the first times I've written a song where I felt like, oh, this song is supposed to be like an overblown like dance number. Rich set a fire and he burned down the house. Whoa. Rich set a fire and he burned down the house. I thought I was dreaming. Everybody was screaming when Rich set a fire and he burned down the house. It's ridiculous to get to do a, like a seven minute number like that. It's just such an infectious song and it's ridiculous. I kept waiting for like, you know, someone to be like, I think like we don't need this whole song on the album. Like the song is like a little bit, like you don't need like a six and a half minute song, but no one ever said it. And we just finished the album and it's on there. So I kind of feel like fooled you suckers, didn't need to be that long, but it's there and it's gonna be there forever. And so I'm really proud of that one. Ready? Okay. I think my favorite song that I sang was probably the opening number, More Than Survive. It's like a six minute song with just so much happening. I think it's one of the best opening numbers of a show I've really ever heard. I don't wanna be a hero. Just wanna stay in the line. I'll never be a Rob De Niro. For me, Joe Pesci is fine. And so I follow my own rules and I use them as my tools to stay alive. I don't wanna be special, no, no. I just wanna survive. And the hooks are just so infectious. I think the melodies are just so melodic and so catchy. There's this moment, you know, it all kind of comes down. Jeremy's by himself, and then he has, he has this line where he says, And teach me how to thrive. And teach me how to thrive. And the kick's going, and then the drum fills are happening in kind of a halftime feeling. You just know it's building to something. And then when the, all of the harmonies kick in, uh, it's just so satisfying. Ah! it be a really great representation of the show as a whole. There's so much of the material and storytelling within the songs and so much of the underscoring and dialogue has been left on the album. I feel like you will be able to almost fully relive the spirit of the show. It feels like a concept album. Theater is fleeting and ephemeral and it ends. Every night it ends and then the show ends and then it's gone, poof. But an album will live on. I hope that people get a really good reflection of what the piece is trying to say. I'm really confident that they will because the proof's in the pudding. The music's awesome. <laughs> go, 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 go,